Oxford Street is London's most iconic shopping district. But yesterday, scenes shared on social media and the news made it seem like a war had broken out. It began when crowds of young people gathered outside JD Sports, apparently prompted by viral TikTok and Snapchat posts encouraging users to take part in a, quote, Oxford Street JD robbery at 3 p.m. The post didn't only get teenagers out, though. They got the police out, too, who set up outside the store just after 3 p.m. So that's when the robbery was due to begin. Two young men were detained by police outside a McDonald's, three doors down from JD Sports, and that prompted onlookers to surge towards the scene in an attempt to film it. In response, some store security guards locked their customers inside while other shops pulled down their metal shutters. The Guardian reports this on what happened next. Minutes later, police chased another group of young men suspected of shoplifting, prompting another surge in young people keen to capture the scene on their phones. One man was searched by three officers as he lay on the pavement. An officer was overheard saying the young men were released without charge after being searched. Yesterday's scenes were easily spun into a tale of mob violence. The people in this video were described by GB News host Darren Grimes as, quote, swarming upon Oxford Street shops to try and steal for the hell of it. Where are the parents, he asked. What will the punishment be? But according to a Met Police statement, while a small number of people were detained, no one was arrested for shoplifting or looting. The Metropolitan Police did say they issued 34 dispersal notices. That's a power that allows the police to break up groups of two or more people believed to be causing a nuisance. And there was more from the Met here who said this. Four people were arrested on suspicion of breaching the dispersal order. One person was arrested on suspicion of going equipped to steal. One person arrested on suspicion of assaulting a police officer. And one person was arrested on suspicion of a public order offence. Earlier in the afternoon, officers arrested two people in Essex for conspiracy to commit robbery following online social media posts. It's possible the only reason there was no mass looting and mass shoplifting was that the police had such a large presence. But the reporting does seem a little overdone. This headline was from the Daily Mail. Chaos on Oxford Street. Police wielding batons clash with dozens of youths outside Microsoft Store as violent scuffles break out across London's shopping district amid fears of TikTok-inspired looting. This is the video the Daily Mail put up on their website, which they describe as shocking. It was rather unclear what was going on there, but you'll notice that in, in that clip, and many of the clips we've, we've seen um, from the event, um, there appears to be as many people filming on their camera phones as doing anything else. Um, and interviews with two teenagers in The Guardian reflect that. So they have a quote from Harry, who is 14. I'm not here to steal anything. I've been raised better than that. I just want to record it. And CJ, who's 16, told them, we're not here to steal stuff. There's loads of famous people making videos. We just saw loads of police and want to see what it's about. And teenagers weren't the only people filming on Oxford Street that day. Um, I enjoyed this video from TikToker Queen Reen the First, who turned up to JD at 3 p.m. So I'm here outside JD Sports in Oxford Street, and I think something's about to happen. And there's pure press here as well. Look at all the press. So lots of police presence at JD in Oxford Street today. And this guy decides to dance in front of a car. So, storm in a teacup or riot for stalled. The evidence to me seems unclear, but our Home Secretary has made her mind up. Um, she's tweeted this. We cannot allow the kind of lawlessness seen in some American cities to come to the streets of the UK. The police have my full backing to do whatever necessary to ensure public order. Those responsible must be hunted down and locked up. I expect nothing less from the Met Police and have requested a full incident report. Hunt them down and lock them up. For what exactly? I mean, it seems unclear to me. Maybe Suella has some evidence unrevealed to plebs like us, or maybe she's just jumping on a chance to fuel another moral panic. Dan, which of those do you think this is? Do you think there is evidence that people were sort of really ready to loot all of these shops and thank God for the police who turned up and stopped it? Or 
you know, d- does it seem like maybe as many people were turning up there to to film other people doing stuff and it sort of ended up being this sort of self-fulfilling prophecy that there would be some sort of chaos? It looked a bit like a weird flash mob. It, it looked a bit, you know, quite benign. Um, but yeah, so I, I totally agree. It's obviously a culture war issue. You know, as the Tories struggle more and more, they're just going to rely on these culture war uh, tropes. And obviously the fear of crime is a long-standing one. I mean, maybe they're running out of folk devils. You know, they've already got migrants, they've got trans people. Maybe they want to uh, fall back on a tried and tested one, which is obviously uh, the highly racialized and racist idea of unruly black youth, which, as Stuart Hall says in Police in the Crisis, becomes a sort of signifier for this general fear of crime. So, I mean, very worrying stuff if, if this is the direction that Braveman and so on are going to go with. Yeah, I mean, they seem very happy to go in this direction. This sort of story or non-story, depending on however we interpret it, did did remind me of a conversation I was having with a friend the other day who was sort of saying, why haven't we seen any riots this summer? You know, the extent or the cost of living crisis, which we've witnessed, the the the, the biggest fall in in living standards since the 40s um, doesn't seem to have, you know, created much of a sort of popular outpouring on the streets. Of course, we've had like a big strike wave, which is is very significant, probably actually, you know, it's probably healthier to have a strike wave than a bunch of riots. It's interesting that we haven't seen much of that sort. I mean, what do you make of that, Dan? Well, that's exactly the role of folk devils. That's what, that's why that's why they're, they're brought out. That's what Stuart Hall says, you know, as living standards plummet, as people become more insecure, as people's lives basically get worse, um, it's far more effective for the state and for the Tories to sort of create these folk devils, whether they be migrants, whether they be trans people, whether they be sort of black youth running around in London. Um, and you project all your insecurities um, and worries onto this figure and, and everything sort of gets bound up in, in the folk devil rather than sort of focusing on uh, the real culprits for what's happening in society, which is obviously the government. 